here we go, live in Los Angeles. It's The Herd, wherever you may be and however you may be listening. Thanks for making us part of your day. I was um, I perusing last night. I watched uh, some Angel stuff. Bobby Valentine's now in the Angel broadcast. Uh, it was watching it or, or doing the studio stuff. And, you know, I'm kind of watching Otani over the last three or four weeks. Angels have gone all in. They're going to keep him. They gave up prospects. So, you know, it, it is interesting, though. When I was at ESPN 10 years ago, if you would have told me that the Yankees would be in last place <laughs> and the Orioles would be in first, I'd be like, I mean, the Orioles and the Rays, the Twins, the Guardians, and you're like, Yankees, I checked last night, were like 11 back. Red Sox are like nine back. Mets, not shockingly, imploded. But remember about 10, 12 years ago, the hot stove league was basically who can the Yankees and Red Sox afford? It's amazing. You get all those draft picks. You're bad for a while. You get draft picks. You look up, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, the Guardians, the Twins, the Orioles, the Rays, they got players. So uh, trading deadline yesterday, Tom Verducci, Fox Sports Major League Baseball analyst, covered baseball for 41 years. So we were talking earlier about Justin Verlander. Basketball has LeBron. Football's got Brady. And whether it's psychology, emotion, nutrition, genetics, Justin Verlander's hard to explain. Still can throw Mm -hmm. upper 90s. Uh, I went back and looked. 2006, he breaks in Rookie of the Year. (laughs) 17 years later, with, you know, pitching's a violent throwing motion. He's still a top-tier old-school power pitcher. You know Verlander a little bit. Uh, Is he wired differently? What is it with him? Yeah, he's wired differently. First of all, this guy loves to compete, and his idol is Nolan Ryan. So he told me years ago, he said, listen, I want to pitch till I'm 45 years old. I mean, who says that in today's game? And it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to push your body to be able to do it. He had a big awakening a few years ago. He's actually still with the Tigers back then. He had core surgery, and he thought he was almost done. He had a game. He came out of a game in Pittsburgh where he literally cried in the runway because he felt so bad because he was so diminished on the mound. And ever since then, he has absolutely rededicated himself to taking care of himself. He does everything with intensity. Everything is intentional. Yeah, you can look at a video of Justin in his rookie year and watch these from this year with the Mets. There's not much change with how he throws a baseball. He's got a lot more left in his tank. Yeah, so the Astros, it feels like everybody in baseball is chasing the Braves. We'll get to that in a second, but the Astros get the big pickup. So the Angels go all in. Um, I could not be a GM uh, and not get something, but I do think Otani is so unique, Tom. If Patrick Mahomes was also the league's best edge rusher, what would you give up for him? I think some of these teams thought, okay, if we make a deal, we don't know if we're going to keep him. We can't gut our farm system because if you pay him $700 million, I need some of those farm hands to play and be affordable. I can't gut my lineup. Otherwise, I'm the Angels. So it, were you surprised that there was, for the best baseball player, I think, top to bottom I've seen, there wasn't a robust trade market. Did that surprise you at all? That's what I, that's what I read. Maybe there was a robust market. There actually was a pretty good market. I spoke with one team that said they put an unprecedented offer on the table to essentially rent Otani for two months. In other words, without really thinking you're going to re-sign him because who knows where that number is going. But essentially paying a price for two players because he has two players in one. That's right. I mentioned I mentioned you mentioned a, a, like a Juan Soto type deal. And this guy said basically the same or even bigger. The problem there is you're trading prospects, really good prospects for Otani. Artie Moreno doesn't want prospects. This is, as you said, it's a generational player. In a vacuum, yes, you have a player who might leave as a free agent. You put him on the market. You get something more than a a compensation pick, right? It's not just another player. In that market, when they haven't been to the playoffs in nine years, they have a winning record, they're four games out of a wild card, you have the best player on the planet, you can't trade him. I'm sorry. It's just the player, the market, the owner, it adds up to a no-brainer. Keep him, play it out, see if you got a chance to sneak into the postseason. By the way, they've been hot since the deadline. Do you think he stays? What would you have, if you were a gambling man, is it 55-45, 50-50? What if they squeak into the playoffs? I think it would be hard to leave. Well, that's a good point because if they traded Otani, the percentage would have been zero. 
right? You lose the power of incumbency. You lose the chance to fall in love with a new direction, if you will, of the Angels, because he hasn't been close to the postseason. He said himself, this is the first time in my six years here we're actually out there buying. He digs that. This guy wants to win. If you saw him play in the WBC, you understand winning is super important to him. So, yes, if they go on some magical kind of run here and they overtake one of these wild card teams and get in, maybe win a series, that will help the Angels keep him. I still think, though, Colin, the number where this is going to go points me to the L.A. Dodgers. They yeah. tried they've they tried to sign him when he was in high school. This is their white whale on the market. They will not be outbid. They can offer everything the Angels can except the fact that, again, if there's some the, kind of this code of chrome moment for the Angels, they get into the postseason and he falls in love with the place. Well, that's what they're trying to see if they can work that out. So a few years ago, uh, the Dodgers got Mookie Betts from the Red Sox. And so they move off Mookie and, and uh, Bogarts. And so you say to yourself, I can understand that's a lot of talent if they move down a little. They weren't going to spend the big money. But the Mets did spend the big money. The Yankees generally spend the big money. And they've struggled. One's imploded. One can make a wild card spot. So let's just concentrate on the Yankees. Whereas their rival, the Red Sox, moved off big price tags. The Yankees go out and get Garrett Cole and pay Aaron Judge, John Carlos Stanton. Do you view the Yankees as a significantly underachieving team this year? Well, I'll go back to last year, Colin. You go back to July of last year, they're 93 and 92. They've essentially been a mediocre team for more than a full calendar year. And the reason why is you look at that team, they've gotten old in a hurry, right? You mentioned Boston. They've had tremendous contributions from people like Jared Duran and, and Casas, and these guys coming up from their farm system. I don't know if they're a playoff team right yet, but I know they're in the mix because they're playing the game that you need to play in today's game. When you look at Baltimore, you look at Cincinnati, you look at Arizona, you need athleticism, you need speed. The Yankees don't have that. And they've counted on their older players reaching what they call the back of the baseball card, right? DJ LeMahieu, uh, Anthony Rizzo, Giancarlo Stanton. Well, they're going the other way right now. Yeah. And if you watch the Yankees since Aaron Judge got back in the lineup, there is no protection for him. So right. even the effect of Judge is muted because nobody will throw him a strike. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the sport is chasing the Braves. Not a shock. They're very well run. They have been forever. They have stars. They have a great farm system. But a couple years ago, two of the last four World Series champs, the Nats and the Braves, were under 500 until deep into the summer. In fact, the Braves were under 500 like August 5th. August, I mean, they, they, they were scrapping to get to it. So that's, that's generally rare. But is there a team... Philadelphia jumps out to me. Is there a team to you that that, that is, uh, I don't know what their record is right now, so I don't know if they're under 500, but tell me a team that's in the 500 or below, slightly. Padres maybe, I think they're under it, that you think, keep your eye, they're a Nats Brave story. Well, the Padres is the only team that can do that right now. They are under 500. You look at their roster and you go, this team's loaded with all-stars. Right. Why can't they get on a run? Well, we've watched them for 100 games, and you know what? They get in their own way. There's something about this team that has not clicked the entire year. Doesn't mean it won't happen, but, Colin, they're going to have to go 35 and 20 the rest of the way to get in the postseason. Can they do it? Yes, when you look at the roster. But if you watch them all year, you would say no. They made some changes at the deadline, kind yeah. of tweak things around the edges, yeah. help them a little bit. But I'm with you on Philadelphia because Philly was under 500 just about a month ago. And they have caught fire. They made a nice deal to get Michael Lorenzen, a little more pitching depth. And let me tell you, if you're around the Phillies, that is a tough bunch of guys. You put them in a playoff atmosphere. And the Braves saw this last year, Colin. They're going to raise their game. And I looked at what the Braves did. And by the way, I agree with you. The Braves have set the bar. And actually, after the trade deadline, I think no one closed gap on the Braves. And they went out and they got a left-handed pitcher, Brad Hand. They're so good, the Braves, that this is like a specialty buy. That's a second left-hander in the bullpen. So if they have to face Schwarber or Bryce Harper in the fifth inning, they don't have to go to A.J. Minter yet. They bring in... Brad Hand, lefty specialist. That's how specialized they're tweaking this roster, Lo looking at postseason matchups and figuring out every little incremental edge they can get. Because on paper, you know, 1 through 26, they're clearly not just the best in the league, the best team in baseball. Yeah, Philly's 58-49. They reportedly have a great locker room. I read a story last week with the Padres. A lot of these, they don't like you. The chemistry's bad. 
It happens. It's happened before. You mix in a lot of stars, young, old. Sometimes it doesn't click. Uh, Tom Verducci, you know, Dodger fans, they're getting all freaked out. They didn't get the move they wanted. My takeaway is even great franchises have a step back here. I feel like they're going after Otani. I think they're a good team. I don't think they're a great team. Are they a World Series team to you? Is there something missing, in your opinion, with the Dodgers that can't get them past, uh, you know, eventually uh, a Houston or an Atlanta? Well, they tipped us off, Colin, because they tried to get a starting pitcher, and they tried real hard. They tried for Verlander. He wanted to go to Houston. Uh, they tried for Dylan Cease to the White Sox. The price was too high for a pitcher who's under control. They actually had a deal for Eduardo Rodriguez, the Tigers, and he's like, you know what? I have family in Miami. I, I just don't want to go to the West Coast at this time. Yeah. He shut that down. So they struck out on getting a top-of-the-market starting pitcher. That tells you that they're signaling – we like our starting pitching, but this is not a typical Dodger staff going to the postseason. Their ERA in July, Dodger rotation ERA, the worst since the franchise landed in L.A. Oh. So I think the questions about their rotation are legit, and we're back to them relying heavily on Clayton Kershaw in a postseason environment. Yeah. I think, is he have a one-year left? This is this, it, Was it a one-year deal? Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's a Dodger for life. It's all about, you know, how much he wants to keep pitching. Yeah. All right, Tom Verducci, four Emmys, Fox Sports, great stuff, trade deadline. The winner has to be Houston because they got a horse in Justin Verlander. Nolan Ryan, by the way, we were talking about it. I think Verlander's got three no-hitters. Nolan had, I think, seven, but he's got an MVP. He's got three Cy Youngs, and he is 17 years in, is still throwing gas. Uh, Justin Verlander. So way to go, Houston. Tom, as always, a total pleasure to see you. Thanks, man. Yeah, always fun, Colin. Thanks. You bet. Yeah, I read a story last week in the Padres. The players don't like each other. There's all sorts of chemistry issues. Remember I told you uh, two weeks ago, I said there's a baseball team. If you could bet it, underdog bet it, it was the Phillies. And I read a little Reddit board on the Phillies. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of baseball. The Otani story is fascinating to me. Fascinating. You think so? I mean, he didn't go anywhere. Well, I know, but it's still, they've got to get to the playoffs for him to stay. That's going to be a $700 million deal. It would have been way more fun if he had left and then as a free well, agent not fun, could go again. Not fun for the Angels. Fun for who? Yep. For everyone else who follows baseball? The only winner here is Angels fans. That's it. And it's, I don't know. We got something against Orange County. It's beautiful. I, that's there. what I hear. Nice. Very nice. You should, you should go for a drive down there. You okay. should move out of your neighborhood. Just stop hanging out with Stafford and actually get on the 405 and go south a little. It's nice down there. Maybe I will. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.